the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... On the wine when it is red in the cup. The good book tells us it biteth like a serpent, it stingeth like an adder. But when it glows that fiery red and bites and stings like a rattlesnake, that's when it bubbles the blood and fires the brain. That's the time, the only time it's worth looking at. But it's hard, so hard to do the right thing. And it's such a small word, such a tiny word. It only has two letters. Why is it so hard to say no? I... I'm guilty. I say you're innocent. I wanted to kill him. That's unimportant. The gun. Yes. My fingerprints are on the gun. I still say you're innocent. Why? Because I want to believe it. mystery drama, Little Green Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The standard engine is a V8. Standard tires, steel belted radios. There are front and rear stabilizer bars, special springs and shock valving, fast ratio power steering, and a rally steering wheel. What makes all this interesting is that it belongs to a full-size six-passenger Buick, the 1977 LeSabre Sport Coupe. You'll have to drive it to believe it. Here in my hand is a little capsule. It's contact. It contains enough cold medicine to help relieve cold symptoms caused by every known virus. Think about that the next time you're sick. Sneezing, dripping, all clogged up. Then let us help you with real medicine, like contact. We're number one in the whole world. Give your cold to contact. Real medicine for real cold. Take only as direct. I walk these streets. What's the trouble, lady? I don't know. My car seems to stall all the time. Oh, what you need is some headlight fluid. It'll make your car go like a jackrabbit. Do you really think so? Don't let him touch that car, madam. I'm the man from the Better Business Bureau. Make sure you know that the repair firm you do business with is a reputable one. There isn't any such thing as headlight fluid. And if you had read your owner's manual, you'd know this. Oh, I can't believe it. And he seems so nice. And that's the way it was. At a place in Russia called Borodino... Napoleon won a battle but lost a war. Now, why should we be concerned? This is, after all, the mystery theater, not the history theater. You see, at the Battle of Borodino, Napoleon was not his usual alert, brilliant self. He was tired. It was an effort to think, to act. Why? Because he had a cold. And why did he have a cold? Because his feet were wet. And why? Because his orderly was drunk the night before and had neglected to make sure that the emperor would have a pair of dry boots. And so the history of the world was changed. We don't even know that orderly's name. But let us consider some other workings of blind chance. Oh, my head. You're looking at me for sympathy. Please don't, don't shout. I'm only whispering. This time, I swear, I'll stay on the wagon. Hmm. 
till you fall off again. Look, I got it down to once a year. Once too many. Where did you go last night? Oh, boy, do I know. Well, what, what did you do? Do I remember? All year, you hardly touch a drug. I know, I know. And then one night, for some reason, for no reason you ever want to talk about, you just get blind, staggering drunk. Now, why? If I could answer that, if only I could answer that. Are you going to work today? Oh, sure. A big sale. Got to open the store early. Elmer, uh, look, about the note. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I thought we'd have the sale. Raise cash quickly. Did you talk to Bob Kirtland? Well, yeah. Uh, about an extension? You know Bob Kirtland. He said no. Oh, don't, don't, don't worry. I'll have the cash for him by next week. Sure, by giving away all the stock in the store. It won't be that bad. It'll be worse. We needed the extension, Elmer, so we could work off the debt and, and still have some equity. I went to see Kirtland at his country house. I told him if he didn't give me an extension, it'd mean I'd probably have to go out of business. You know what he said? Mm -mm. He said, uh, in the long run, he'd be doing me a favor. He was? He said, I wasn't cut out for business. The sooner I realized it, the better. Okay, it's been a bad year, Elmer. It's not your fault. Well, I, I told him. And he just said it hadn't been a bad year for him. Just for fellows who didn't know what they were doing. So how did you leave it? How did I leave it? Oh, he, he may have said no, but is there any possibility that he might change his mind? Uh, I, I, I don't think so. Would it help if I asked I him? don't think so. Well, Bob Kirtland is a man who's completely devoid of sentiment. Oh, don't say that. Well, furthermore, he has it in for me personally. Now, that's where you're wrong. Bob Kirtland never gets personal about business. Yeah, well, I think that's changed. What do you mean? I got... A little personal about Bob Kirtland last night. Elmer. I couldn't help it. I saw all those years of hard work and every dollar we have in the world going down the drain and, and... And and what? Well, I guess I told him off. Oh. I, uh... I called him a vulture. A vulture? And then I stopped off at Sid's and uh, had a drink. Mm-hmm. And then another drink. I see. That's all I remember, really. I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, Lucy. I'm really, really sorry. All right. Well, you are going to pick up the phone and call Bob Kirtland, and you are going to apologize. Now, wait just a minute. It has to be done. Not after what I said to him. Especially after what you said to him. I've got my pride. Yeah, pride is an extravagance you can't afford. That's what he wants to do, make me crawl. He is a meticulous man. The floor is clean in his house. I won't do it. I'll dial his number. Oh, now, who do you suppose that is at this hour of the morning? Well, don't stand there, Elmer. Open it. Good morning, Sheriff. Oh, it's you, Sheriff. Yeah, I'm afraid it's me. Well, that doesn't sound so good, but... Come on in anyhow. We, we see you once a year. Each time after Elmer's had his little evening. You were here last, uh, let's see, it was... Yes, it'll be a year next month. <laughs> Elmer went swimming in the town hall fountain. You want a cup of coffee, Sheriff? Well, I do, but I don't know if I should. I, uh, I come here to place Elmer under arrest. Huh? Oh. What for? Did, did I do something crazy last night? I'm afraid you did. What, uh, what did he do, Sheriff? Elmer, I arrest you for the murder of Robert Kinfeather Kirtland. Oh, no. And I must inform you that anything you say may be used against you. Murder? Bob Kirtland? He's dead? Yeah, last night. But... Why do you say that Elmer did it? Elmer was there. But that, that's right. I, I, I was. Elmer, did you? I, I don't know. We found the gun. Elmer's never fired a gun in his life. Oh, yeah. well, Elmer wouldn't know how. He, he, he wouldn't even own a gun. He dislikes guns. Everybody knows that. Uh, that may be true, but he fired one at Bob Kirtland last night. How can you say that? His fingerprints are on it. Well, how could he... I'm sorry. 
Elma. Oh, I don't know. Well, all right. All right. Bob had Elmer in a very tight squeeze. Uh, the whole town knows that. And uh, Elmer went to visit him last night to uh, to see if they could make some kind of a, a, a financial arrangement. Do you understand, Sheriff? Yeah, it's clear. And, and, and Bob Kirtland, being Bob Kirtland, I, I mean no disrespect to the dead, but... Well, Bob Kirtland was the meanest, stingiest, most vindictive. Yeah, I've heard that said. Well, and one word led to another. Elmer became so angry, so desperate. You see, he faces the loss of everything. Do you realize that? Yes. And so, so he lost his temper, and in a fit of rage, he he killed Bob Kirtland. It, it, it's murder, yes, but you see, it's it's not cold-blooded, premeditated murder. Oh, it, it's not justified. Murder is never justified, but it is understandable. And the jury will have to take that into consideration. The jury will also have to take something else into consideration, Lucy. Well, what's that? The fact that he had a gun. A gun? A fit of rage all very well, Lucy. But why did he bring the gun unless he meant to use it? Elmer? I... I don't know, Sheriff. I just don't know. Lucy! Well, I didn't think you'd be in the store today. I can't afford not to be in the store, Phil. I, uh... I want you to know... I'll do everything I can. Thanks, Phil. I don't believe Elmer could have killed Bob Kirtland. Oh, well, they've got a gun with his fingerprints. I don't care about that. Do you believe Elmer's guilty? It's crazy. Elmer's the sweetest, most gentle human being in the whole wide world, but maybe once a year when he starts drinking... I believe he's innocent. Oh, Phil, Phil, you and Elmer, you're two of a kind. No, no, we're not. We're friends. We're buddies since kindergarten. But I'm not like Elmer at all. And you know that. I'm practical. But he's a dreamer. I'm down to earth. I've made money, a lot of money. And it's yours. Yours and Elmer's. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I'm Elmer's friend. I'm your friend. You should have borrowed the money from me in the first place instead of going to Bob Kirtland. But you don't borrow money from friends. Now, look, Elmer needs a lawyer. Well, I thought I'd ask Lou Ballantyne. To do what? Lucy, this is a murder case. I know, but Lou is very good. Sure, sure. Drawing up contracts, writing wills, but he's never, ever defended against a murder charge. Yes, but still, I... It's, it's like it is with doctors. You don't go to a psychiatrist to take your appendix out. Now, you need a lawyer who specializes in murder. And you're not going to find one in this town. I, I just don't know what to say, then. I do. I've engaged a lawyer for you. You have? You need one of the best lawyers in the world. Because that jury is going to be afraid to acquit Elmer. Or even to let him off easy. How can you say that? Elma grew up in this town. Everybody knows him. They'll be fair. Melissa Kirtland is on her way home from Europe. Her father's dead. Now she owns the town. Well, Lucy. <laughs> Look, I forgave you for marrying Elmer. But she never forgave Elmer for marrying you. Now, that's why you need a lawyer who can keep the judge and the state's attorney and even the jury on their toes. Oh, Melissa wouldn't... Uh... Wouldn't what? Oh, Lucy, you're a very sweet and decent person, but you shouldn't judge everyone by yourself. On that jury, you'll have shopkeepers, you'll have farmers. They won't be out to alienate Melissa Kirtland, the richest woman in the county. But Elmer wasn't himself. Everybody knows he wasn't himself. It'll be tried before Judge Gary. Judge Gary is fair and honest. And Jerry Holt, the DA, would like to run for governor. The Kirtland family has been the biggest contributor to the party. Phil, I, I don't know what to do. You don't have to do anything. We'll make sure Elmer gets every possible break. I've already engaged a lawyer from New York. I don't think any lawyer could help. This one can. She's never lost a case. She? Oh, come on now. Are you prejudiced because she's a woman? <laughs> faces trial for his life, no one can be closer to him than his attorney. 
And if the lawyer happens to be a woman, can his wife ever really feel completely at ease? Especially if he's acquitted. It means that the most important thing in his life will have been done for him by another woman. I just bring this up as a bonus. I'll return shortly with Act Two. This is Howard Cosell introducing the one subject about which I cannot speak with authority, CB Radio, but I'm not alone. Therefore, for everyone who hungers for knowledge, I question General Electric. Their answers make it apparent why GE is expert in CB. Listen to the words of Jim Tillman, GE CB engineering manager. Jim, give me one good reason to buy GECB. Performance, Howard. A hackneyed phrase. Be specific. Okay. There's been much speculation that 40-channel units have less power than 23s. However, GE's 40-channel models are engineered for maximum allowable power and exceed FCC guidelines on interference. Maximum allowable power? Sounds like my good wife, Emmy. But seriously, Jim, it argues persuasively for GECB. Performance. Another reason to buy GECB. This is how it Cosell saying, G.E., that's more than you can say about any other C.B. When I was a little kid, I didn't worry at all about taxes, but my daddy did. Then, when I graduated, was graduated from high school, I started to earn money and pay taxes myself. Actually, earned enough to take some business courses, and then I opened my own carryout shop. Eventually, that one shop became 14 carryouts spread all over the city. Well, now I'm retired, and since I'm over 65, I'm eligible for special income tax benefits, like an extra $750 exemption, special provisions when I sell my home, and even a credit for the elderly. The Internal Revenue Service has a free booklet that tells you all about tax benefits for older Americans. Use the coupon inside your tax package to order it. You'll be surprised how much help it'll give you. Sure help me. Well, if you say so, Granddaddy. Yeah, I say so. (laughs) The hand, they say, is quicker than the eye. But what, then, is quicker than either? Why, the mind, of course. Mind eye and hand. They were designed to work in unison and harmony as a team. But what happens when they seem to be working at cross purposes? Well, obviously we're in for a great many differences of opinion. Lucy, this is Miss Adelaide Gordon. How how do you do? Miss Gordon, Mrs. Baker, Elmer's wife. Hmm. Tell me, Mrs. Baker, is your husband innocent? Well, how, how would I know that? I think a woman knows. Well, according to all the evidence... We're not concerned with the evidence. Well, how can you, a lawyer, not be concerned with the evidence? You think a jury makes up its mind on the basis of evidence? I would assume so. No, no, a jury is made up of human beings. Human beings do not make personal decisions on the basis of facts. I'm not a big city lawyer, but I would venture to disagree. Would you? Well, I think people are more intelligent than they're given credit for. Uh, Permit me, Mrs. Baker. About 12 years ago, you were the most popular girl in this town. You could have had your pick of practically all the attractive and eligible young men. Well, that wasn't that popular. You chose Elmer Baker, who had no money and very poor prospects. I was in love with Elmer. My point exactly. The most important decision you ever made in your life had nothing to do with facts. Evidence or logic? Well, you're not alone. People don't change the habits of a lifetime just because they happen to be sitting on a jury. They'll believe what they want to believe. But in a court of law, the evidence... A person sitting on that jury doesn't know what to believe. Maybe he wants to believe Elmer is innocent. But he looks at you. You're his wife. He has to see that belief on your face. Suppose he doesn't. But there's proof Elmer's guilty. He was there. His fingerprints are on the gun. The best thing for him to do is to admit it and just throw himself on the mercy of the court. He'll be put away for life. Is that what you want? No. 
You have no right to say that to me. I'm just telling you how I feel. Your feelings are of no importance. Elmer is my client. He becomes the most important person in the world to me. I don't think that Phil did a wise thing in engaging you. You don't. This is a small town. You have a brilliant reputation. People will resent your presence here. They'll, they'll feel you're the big city expert here to show up the local talent. L- let's straighten it out, Mrs. Baker. You wouldn't feel this way if I were a man. You're jealous of me. That is the most ridiculous thing He's I... in desperate trouble. You want to be the one to save him. I... I have no interest in your husband as a man. I'm... I'm considered one of the top ten trial lawyers in the country. But I won't force myself into this case. I could be on the next plane out of here. Now, wait a minute, Miss Gordon. You agreed to take the case. Mrs. Baker can lose it for me. Let the jury see the doubt and indecision on her face, and we don't have a chance. But we don't have a chance anyhow. The gun, the fingerprints. Believe he's innocent, Mrs. Baker. Phil Hastings here believes it. Do you, Phil? Do you really? Yes. That's why I accepted the assignment. Because Mr. Hastings is sincerely convinced of your husband's innocence. Mrs. Baker, you know Elmer better than anyone. In your heart. Now forget the gun and the fingerprints and the motive and the opportunity. Do you believe Elmer could commit murder? No. Believe that when you sit in the courtroom. If Bob Kirtland put the squeeze on many people in this town, there could be others with a motive to kill him. Is that true, Mr. Hastings? Oh, yes. Let's see if we could trace Elmer's movements. He left home at about what time, Mrs. Baker? Oh, just about four. And he headed out toward the Kirtland place. How long would it take him to get there? About half an hour. No one was at the house except Mr. Kirtland. Now, the next thing we hear about Elmer comes from you, Mr. Hastings. Uh, Yes. Uh, About 11.30, I got a call from Sid Bellows. He owns a bar. He said I ought to come down and keep an eye on Elmer. I went down there. Elmer was pretty far gone. I couldn't reason with him in that state, so I stayed with him till he... till he passed out. Then I took him home. What time was that? Uh, what time was that, Lucy? Midnight? Mm Mm-hmm. Midnight, exactly. I know, because there was a show on the air that had just gone off. And then what? I managed to get him to bed. He slept through the night till seven in the morning when he had to get up to go to work. He left the house at four in the afternoon. At 4.30, he arrived at the Kirtland house. uh, what, What time did he show up at the tavern? Uh, a little after five. Sid will confirm that. How long would it take to get from the Kirtland house to Sid's tavern? Mm, Maybe a half hour. And he only spent a few minutes with Bob Kirtland. The coroner places the time of death somewhere around 4.30. I don't know. It just gets worse and worse. No matter how bad it sounds, Lucy, you just keep believing. I'll try. Sheriff. Who discovered uh, Bob Kirtland's body? Bill Howley. She comes in mornings, does cleaning. She got there at 8 o'clock. Front door was open. And she kicked something with her foot. She looked down. It was a revolver. A thirty-two caliber revolver that fired the bullet that killed Bob Kirtland. That's been established by ballistical tests. Did she pick it up? She was back to... Uh, then she noticed Bob Kirtland lying on the floor, dead. She didn't touch nothing. She's seen too many murder shows. Mm. And this is the gun that's supposed to have Elmer Baker's fingerprints on it. Now, I appreciate the fact that a lawyer has to put it that way, ma'am, but it wasn't supposed to have. It did have Elmer's prints on it. How did you find that out so quickly? Uh, uh, well... We knew Elmer had gone to see him, so we just did a routine check. We got his prints at the city hall, Elmer's volunteer fireman. I must say, ma'am, i never seen a murder case where there's so much evidence against a man. <laughs> How many murder cases have you seen, Sheriff? Uh, ma'am, 
I must admit, there you got me. I would like to see Elmer now, please. I've heard of you. You mean you're going to defend me? Yes. But you must cost a fortune. I don't come cheaply. Well, I, c- I could never afford to pay you. Uh, my fee is being taken care of. By whom? You have a good friend. Phil. I won't let him. He's already done it. Let's talk about important things. You, for instance. I understand you go out and get roaring drunk once a year. Why? I don't know. Yes, you do. I guess because I'm a failure. In other words, you feel sorry for yourself. That's right. I wanted to be a writer. What stopped you? I'm just not good enough. And you can't accept it. I opened a bookshop. I like to be surrounded by great writing. Well, that should make you happy. I'm a bad businessman. The only books I sell are those I like to read myself. Consequently... Your selection is limited. Yes. Well, things turned bad financially. I had to borrow money from Bob Kirkland. I, I, I couldn't pay it back on time. So you went to see him to ask for an extension. Yes, that's right. How did it turn out? Bad. I, I knew it would be bad before I even got there. How? Oh. You believe in signs, omens? It depends. I have this new car. You were tight for money and you bought a new car? What could we do? The old one collapsed. You can't live without a car in this town? Uh, go, go ahead. Kirtland's place is across the Mule River. Yes. You've got to go over the new bridge to get there. It's a big steel suspension bridge. I, I don't even know why I bother telling you this. I mean, it, it's it's stupid. Uh, you never know. Well, they were painting it. They, they they had a crew spraying this green paint on the bridge. Those fellows are supposed to be careful, but I, I got some paint on the grill of the car. Paint? Well, it wasn't much. It was just a couple of drops. But it was just my luck. I knew then things would go badly. And they did. I... I asked Bob for some more time. He said no. Well, we had some words. And I left. Just to go out and tie one on. Did you kill him? I don't know. You were sober at the time, weren't you? I, I don't know about that either. You see, even to go and talk to Bob Kirkland took more nerve than I've got. When I'm sober. So I bought a bottle and I kept fortifying myself on the way there. As I remember, that was the text of Bob's sermon to me. Did you kill him? I must have. That's not an answer we can work with. Did you kill him? I don't know. Look, I, I can't stand the thought of killing that's how I've been all my life. I'm absolutely unable to take another human life. And and yet... Yes? Well, there's, there's the gun. How can we explain my fingerprints on that gun? At this point, we can't. Let's forget it for now. You say you are... were unable to take a human life. Yes. Yes, I'd, I'd, I'd sooner die. But... Yes? The gun. What about the gun? Well, that's it. I can't explain that gun. What was I doing with a gun? Uh, no, wait. Did you have a gun when you went to see Kirtland? I don't... I don't see how. But I remember a gun. You remember a gun? Yes, yes. You remember seeing a gun, carrying a gun... Firing a gun? I just, I just remember holding a gun. There was a gun in my hand. When? That day, that, that, that night. <laughs> it's gone from me. 
I, I can't really remember what happened. All right, maybe I don't want to remember. What's the difference? The fact is... <laughs> everything's gone from my memory except that gun. I remember holding a gun. But surely it's coming out. He remembers holding a gun. How would you like to be his lawyer? Miss Adelaide Gordon is supposed to be among the ten best in the country. She's never lost a murder case. How would you bet now? Well, don't risk your money. You'll get the answer in Act Three. We know a mover who knows about moving. We're going to a new hometown. He cares about the treasures he's packing With Allied Van Lines, with Hey Van Zandt Allied Van Lines, our people care For damaged shoes, us to get them there Moving with Allied Van Lines The most trusted in the world I'm Jack Shang, president of Allied Van Lines I want you to know that all of the people at Allied have made a personal commitment to make your move go smoothly. Our moving counselors, packers, van foremen, and agents are proud that more families choose Allied than any other mover. They're dedicated and committed to doing the best possible job for you. See the yellow pages for the Allied Van Lines agent near you. Yeah, it's a, a good feeling, a good, good, good feeling. Oh. Yes, it's a, a good feeling, a good, good feeling. Hi, this is Lola Falana. You know... The minimum wage is $2.30 an hour for most non-farm workers. If you're not being paid the minimum wage and you think you should be, then call the nearest wage in our office today. This message has been brought to you as a public service by the U.S. Department of Labor and this station. As you live of judging people by appearances, said a French philosopher. And so, if we must forbear to judge people, how much more vital is it to withhold our judgment of things? Give a man a strong motive to commit murder. Have him present at the scene of the crime. Find his fingerprints on the murder weapon. And now ask yourself this question. Would you rather be the attorney for the defense? Or the prosecution. You remember a gun? Yes. I remember a gun. A revolver. What do you remember about it? Nothing. I, I, just, I just remember a revolver. I was holding a revolver in my hand. Why? I don't know. Had you fired it? I don't know. Where did you get it? I don't like to keep saying I don't know. But... You have to help me. I have to start with something. But everyone says... Forget what everyone says. Ask yourself, is it possible for you to kill... But how did my fingerprints get on that gun? Let, let me worry about that. Let you worry? Uh, if you killed him, then that would account for the fingerprints. You were desperate. You acted in a frenzy. Why did you bring the gun? All right, you brought it to scare him. You, ne you never meant to use it. You lost your head, you pulled the trigger. You were so scared, so disoriented, you even dropped the gun where it could be found. Well, then, maybe that's what I did. I must know for sure. If you're convinced you didn't do it, then I'll believe you didn't do it. Did you or did you not kill Bob Kirtland? No. All right. I'm not a killer. I, 
I don't care how it looks. I didn't do it. And that's the defense. Phil, we have to talk to her. I'm frightened. She isn't doing anything. Now, maybe it looks that way, but you don't... But what? Look, she's supposed to be this big, high-powered lawyer, but she just sits there and nothing happens. The district attorney makes all the points. If I were on that jury... Lucy, it's possible there are legal issues that she's trying to get certain irregularities reversed by a higher court. What irregularities? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Is she a lawyer? At least Lou Ballantyne is well-liked in this town. What can we do? Talk to her. Maybe she can change Elmer's plea. I mean, this way he's sure to be convicted. I'm sorry. You're dissatisfied, Mrs. Baker. I don't know what to say. It's obvious we're losing this case. Do you believe Elmer murdered Kirtland? No. No. Do you, Phil? No. I don't believe it either. How can I change our defense? It's the truth. Well, why... Why can't we just say that Elmer was seized by a a, a... a fit of temporary madness, and that's why he killed Bob Kirtland? You'd be asking me to base our defense on a lie. Please, Miss Gordon, I don't know what to think, what to believe. I only know that this way we are just losing. Can you give us some assurance that your line of defense will be successful, Miss Gordon? I'm a lawyer. I go with what I believe is the truth. I believe Elmer is innocent. And I have to go down the line with it. Come in. Oh, well, good evening, Miss Gordon. Uh, mind if I ask you a few questions, Sheriff? No, no, have a seat. Thank you. Case isn't going too well, is it? Between you and me, it could be better. Off the record, why'd you take it? I was impressed by Phil Hastings. He's absolutely convinced of Elmer's innocence. And despite the way Lucy talks, so is she. And when you look into Elmer's eyes, you know he's not a killer. Mm, None of that seems to be going over with the jury. Well, this jury's different. That's the truth. They can't afford to acquit against the evidence. Uh, I know about Melissa Kirtland and her influence. And she hates Elmer. That's understandable. She thinks he killed her father. No. She hated her father. Just 12 years ago, she was crazy about Elmer. That's funny. The richest girl in town falling for the poorest boy. She made no secret of it. She was out to get him. But he turned her down. And she never did forgive him. He could have married Melissa Kirtland. Hmm? Instead, he married Lucy. Lucy was going steady. Well, we thought it was steady with Phil Hastings. Phil took it hard. He got into a pretty bad fist fight. I know, I had to break it up. I guess Phil's more of a man than most folks ever give him credit for. He made up with Elmer. They're the best of friends. I see. He must have gone into Hawk to hire you, even though he knew it had to be for a lost call. Why do you say it's a lost cause? Well, you... You're just the wrong lawyer. Well, now, no offense, now, nothing personal. That's just the way it is. down, Miss Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ballantyne. I must say, this is an honor. The Adelaide Gordon visiting an old country lawyer like myself. <laughs> You're much too modest, Mr. Ballantyne. The fact is, I've come for a consultation. Have you been following the trial? Yes. We've never had anything like it in town. You're aware of my line of defense? Yes. What line would you have used? Same one. I would have insisted on Elmer's innocence, just as you are. Why? For the same reason. I believe in it. That's my problem, Mr. Ballantyne. You would have the ability to transfer this belief to the jury. 
evidently I don't. Mm. I think you're doing an excellent job, Miss Gordon. The trial isn't over yet. <laughs> it is, and you know it. Well, if we could assume that Elmer did not murder Bob Kirkland, we must ask ourselves the logical question. Who did? I'm a lawyer, not a detective. <laughs> Sometimes there's little difference. You might ask yourself a question. Instead of trying to find out who else may have wanted to kill Bob Kirtland, who might have wanted to kill Elmer Baker? Kill Elmer? Well, sending him to jail for 20 years, or life, it amounts to the same thing. Yes, I see what you mean. Who would want to kill Elmer? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, I don't have any enemies. Think. Who? You never got into a fight with anyone? No, never. Well, that doesn't square with what the sheriff told me. He said you and Phil Hastings had a terrible brawl when you took Lucy away from oh, him. Oh, well, that doesn't count. Why not? Phil and I, we were, we were best friends before I married Lucy. And even though we had that very brief flare-up, we've remained best friends ever since. Uh, go back to the day of the murder. Oh, again? Did Phil know you were going to see Bob? Yes, yes, he, he disapproved. He said he'd lend me the money to pay part of the note. And you didn't take it? I like Phil too much to borrow money from him. You left the store and went to see Kirtland. You drove all the way out there, and you had to cross the... the what bridge? The Mule River, the big suspension bridge. And they were painting it. Yes, that's what lit the fuse. I got this paint spattered on my grill. Then you had your interview with Bob Kirtland. And from there on, your mind is a blank. Yes. But maybe I did kill him. Look, you get to be 40, you're headed nowhere. You don't have the ability or the guts to do what you really want. No, don't even start that line of thought. Right now, we can't afford it. <laughs> The defense calls Mr. Peter Garrick. Mr. Garrick, on the afternoon of the 25th, where were you? I was on the Mule River Bridge. Uh, what were you doing there? I was there with my crew. We were painting the bridge. Painting the bridge? Well, we were spraying on the first coat. You know what I mean, the, the green coat. Uh-huh. You were there from when to when? Well, we start in the morning after the rush at 10 o'clock, and we usually quit 4.30 before the night rush. You were spraying this paint, you say. Cars driving past, they uh, could have caught some of it. Yeah, maybe a couple of drops. We keep a bucket of turpentine and rags at the end of the bridge and a sign that says, use this to remove any paint that may accidentally... I, I know, I know. I, and you stopped at 4.30. Yes, ma'am. On the head. If it pleases the court, it is our contention that Elmer Baker is innocent. However, this leaves a question. If Elmer Baker did not murder Robert Kirtland, who did? At approximately 4.30 that afternoon, someone fired the fatal bullet into Mr. Kirtland's body. But who? It is my contention, and I intend to prove that Elmer Baker is the victim of a plot. A carefully designed and brilliantly executed scheme that almost worked. The defense calls Mr. Philip Hastings. Uh, me? Uh, yes, Mr. Hastings, you. Mr. Hastings, can you account for your movements on the day of the 25th? Well, do I, uh, uh, do I have to? Yes, Mr. Hastings, you have to. I left my apartment after breakfast. I went to my office, which is just down the street from here. I was busy all day. I even had lunch sent in. And then I worked late, and I went home. I brought some work with me. And then at 11, I got a call from Sid Jenkins of Sid's Bar and Grill... He said Elmer was getting a bit hard to handle. So I went there and I calmed him down and took him home. 
At no time, then, during the 25th, did you visit the home of Mr. Bob Kirtland? Why would I want to? Please answer. Of course not. Then, on the 25th, you had no occasion to cross the New River Bridge. Well, certainly not. I say you did. Why? I say you killed Bob Kirtland. Why? Chancellor, are you charging Mr. Hastings with murder? I am, Your Honor. On what evidence? Some years ago, Elmer Baker took Lucy away from Phil Hastings. And that's why Mr. Hastings murdered Bob Kirtland? Yes, Your Honor. To make it look as if Elmer did it. Phil never forgave Elmer, and he bided his time. Oh, that's, that's a lie. I would appreciate some facts, Counselor. Phil Hastings saw a sudden opportunity to be rid of Elmer Baker. With Elmer in jail and out of Lucy's life, Phil could once again woo her and this time win her. But he had to maintain the appearance of great friendship. So he followed Elmer to Kirtland's house. When he saw Elmer leave, he went inside, shot Bob Kirtland. It's a lie! Your Honor, I shall present the proof in just a moment. He knew Elmer would be staggering drunk. He met Elmer at Sid's bar, took him home, and while Elmer was practically out cold, he made Elmer grasp the butt of the revolver, which is how Elmer's fingerprints came to be on it. Well, that just isn't true. After he brought Elmer home, he drove back to the Kirtland place and dropped the revolver on the floor. What? What are you trying to do to me? And there was Elmer, neatly tied up for the killing. But Phil had to make sure... In the ordinary way, Lou Ballantyne would defend Elmer. Lou, who knows each one of you in this town, who could have convinced you of Elmer's innocence. So, Phil decided to make himself appear a great friend by calling in a famous outsider. Not, not one word is true. Counselor, this is all supposition. Are there facts? Do you still insist, Mr. Hastings that you did not go to the Kirtland house on the 25th? I never left this town. You did not cross the Mule River Bridge? Certainly not. Then, Your Honor, I suggest the court moves to the parking lot, where on the right front grill and the left rear panel of Mr. Philip Hastings' car, we will find tiny smudges of the green paint that was sprayed on the Mule River Bridge on the day of the murder. And they did. They found the tiny incriminating stains of paint exactly where she said they would. You heard the saying, for want of a nail. Well, here Philip Hastings might lament for the want of a few drops of turpentine. I shall return shortly. The 1977 Buick Regal. It comes with Buick's terrific V6 engine. It carries six people and lots of Buick comfort. It's lean. It's maneuverable in city traffic. It's the most luxurious mid-sized car Buick builds. Yeah, this new Regal is pretty much everything a car should be. Except for one thing. It isn't yours yet. But it can be. To see a Buick dealer for a test drive soon. Now, a question for the Shell Answer Man. What's the best all-around tool for keeping a car in good shape? Surprisingly, a pencil. If you keep a written maintenance record, you'll know if you've done all the car care jobs your owner's manual recommends. Preventive maintenance is the best maintenance. Terrific. I'll make a note of that. Learn more ways to help your car last in the 100,000 Mile Book. Look for it in leading magazines or pick up a free copy from a participating Shell dealer. Come to Shell for answers. You probably don't go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. Hi, Pat Summerall. You probably pick up some while you're there. 
just because you happen to see them at the checkout counter. But now here's a good reason to go to your True Value hardware store just to buy batteries. Now you can get a four-pack of Rayovac C or D size batteries for just 77 cents with a coupon from their Super 7 Value Circular. That's four C or D batteries for just 77 cents. You might not need batteries right now, but remember those times when you needed your flashlight and the batteries were dead? Or the time you were going to the beach with your portable radio and guess what? No batteries. Those are not the times to go to the store for batteries. Now's the time, while they're on sale. Get a four-pack of Rayovac C or D size batteries for just 77 cents. That's with a coupon from the Super 7 Value Circular from participating True Value hardware stores. And remember, True Value, that is much more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. And by the way, tell them Pat Summerall sent you. mountains, but they don't say which way. Well, you can move them any way you wish in the face of an opposition. You can do great things, provided you make sure all the little details are taken care of. If you want to commit a murder, make sure you don't leave some little insignificant tiny loose end dangling. It can lengthen into a noose. On second thought, don't do it. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Bob Dryden, Carol Titel, and Nat Polan. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by General Electric Citizen Band Radios and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.